Frustrated and desperate, Adure resorted to blackmail, threatening to expose dark secrets about the witch doctor's past that she had from her father if he did not comply with her wishes. Reluctantly, the witch doctor relented, knowing that he had no other choice but to bend to Adure's will. Once upon a time, in the beautiful kingdom of Umowe, there lived two best friends named Adure and Ofoma. They grew up together, sharing secrets, laughter, and dreams. Both girls were as pretty as blooming flowers in the kingdom. But Ofoma's charm sparkled a little brighter, and everyone adored her. As they grew older, Adure noticed that more and more people were drawn to Ufoma's light, and she felt a pang of jealousy in her heart. She started to distance herself from her best friend, making excuses to avoid spending time together. Ufoma, unaware of Adure's feelings, continued to shower her with love and kindness. One sunny day, the kingdom buzzed with excitement as a grand dance festival was announced. It was a special occasion where the prince of Umowe, Prince Tobina, would choose his bride from among the maidens of the kingdom. Adure and Ufoma, like many other young maidens, eagerly prepared for the festival, adorning themselves in their finest attire. The festival began with lively music and colorful dances. The maidens twirled and swayed, hoping to catch the prince's eye. Adure danced with all her mind, her heart filled with a desperate longing to be chosen. Finally, the moment of truth arrived. Prince Tobina, handsome and regal, strode through the lines of maidens, his eyes searching for the one who would capture his heart. The tension in the air was palpable as he made his way closer to Ufoma. As Prince Tobena extended his hand towards Ufoma, a wave of joy washed over her. With a radiant smile, she placed her hand in his, her heart singing with happiness. The crowd erupted into cheers and applause as they celebrated the union of the prince and his chosen bride. But amidst the jubilation, Adure's heart burned with envy and bitterness. She watched in silence as her best friend was swept away by the prince, leaving her alone in the crowd. Unable to bear the sight any longer, Adure stormed away from the festivities, her mind consumed by dark thoughts. Meanwhile, Prince Tobina led Ufoma to meet his parents, the king and queen of Umoye. The royal couple welcomed their future daughter-in-law with open arms, showering her with blessings and affection. Ufoma, overwhelmed with gratitude, danced and laughed with her new family, feeling like the luckiest girl in the kingdom. As the night wore on and the celebration continued, Adure, seated with rage in the shadows. She couldn't bear the thought of Ufoma living a life of luxury and happiness while she remained in the shadows, unnoticed and unloved. With each passing moment, her jealousy festered like a poisonous seed in her heart, until it consumed her entirely. And so, in the darkness of the night, Adure made a fateful decision. She would do whatever it took to claim the prince for herself, even if it meant betraying her best friend in the most heinous way possible. With a heart as cold as ice, she plotted her wicked scheme, her eyes gleaming with malice, and she set her plan into motion. The next morning, Ufama decided to pay Adure a visit to inquire 
about why she had left the dance festival so suddenly the previous day. As she approached Adane's home, she noticed her friend sitting outside wearing a forced smile. Adure, I was worried about you yesterday. Why did you leave without saying anything? Ufama asked with genuine concern. Adure's smile faltered for a moment before she quickly composed herself. Oh, Ufama, I'm sorry. I wasn't feeling well. I had to rush home to take my medication. She lied, avoiding Ufama's gaze. Ufama nodded understandably. I hope you are feeling better now. Is there anything I can do to help? Adure shook her head. No, thank you. I'm feeling much better now. Ufama smiled warmly. That's good to hear. I wanted to tell you how grateful I am for your friendship and support. I couldn't have made it through yesterday without you. Adure forced another smile, hiding the bitterness that churned in her heart. Of course, Ufoma, I'm so happy for you. She replied through gritted teeth. As soon as Ufoma left, Adure's facade crumbled and her true feelings emerged. How dare she steal everything from me? She muttered to herself, her eyes blazing with fury. I won't let her get away with this. I will make sure she pays for what she has done. Weeks passed and the kingdom of Umowe buzzed with excitement as preparations for Ufoma and Prince Tobena's wedding began. Adure was roped into helping with the arrangement. Her resentment slimly beneath the surface as she pretended to be happy for her friend. The traditional marriage ceremony was a grand affair with villagers from all corners of the kingdom gathering to celebrate the union of Ufoma and Prince Tobena. Adure plastered a fixed smile on her face as she watched her best friend become a princess before her eyes. As the festivities came to an end and the villagers dispersed, Ufama was welcomed into the royal palace with open arms. Prince Tobena showered her with love and affection, lavishing her with gifts and attention. Adure locked in the shadows, bidding her time and nursing her grudge against Ufama. She pretended to be a loyal friend offering her company and assistance whenever needed, all the while plotting her own wicked schemes in secret. Ufoma, trusting and unsuspecting, never once doubted Adure's intentions. She confided in her friend, sharing her hopes and dreams for the future, on her way of the darkness that locked within Adure's heart. But little did Ufoma know that her so-called friend was plotting her downfall, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. And as the days turned into weeks, Adore's jealousy and resentment only grew stronger, fueling her desire for revenge. Two months passed, and Ufama's belly began to swell with the promise of a new life. The royal family rejoiced at the news of her pregnancy. And Prince Tobena could hardly contain his excitement. He doted on his wife, sharing her with love and affection, his heart overflowing with joy. Unable to contain her own excitement, Ufoma paid a visit to Adure, eager to share her happiness with her best friend. As they sat together, Ufoma beamed with pride as she revealed the news of her impending motherhood. Adure, guess what? Ufoma exclaimed, her eyes shining with excitement. I'm going to have a baby. Adure's heart sank at the announcement, but she forced a smile onto her face, masking her true feelings. Oh, Ufoma, that's wonderful news. I'm so happy for you. She replied, her voice tinged with sadness. The two friends laughed and chatted late into the evening, sharing stories and dreams for the future. Adure pretended to be overjoyed for Ufoma, but inside her heart, 
burned with jealousy and resentment. After bidding her friend farewell, Adore returned home, consumed by anger and bitterness. She knew she had to act fast if she wanted to destroy Ufoma once and for all. With a heart full of malice, she made her way to the dwelling of a notorious witch doctor in the kingdom. Upon reaching the witch doctor's hut, Adure pleaded with him to help her fulfill her wicked desires. She begged him to make Ufoma have miscarriage, to make her barren for life, to bring about her downfall and ensure that she never experienced happiness again. But the witch doctor, wise to the ways of the world, refused Adure's request. He knew the consequences of meddling with fate and he wanted no part in Adure's sinister plot. Frustrated and desperate, Adure resorted to blackmail, threatening to expose dark secrets about the witch doctor's past that she had from her father if he did not comply with her wishes. Reluctantly, the witch doctor relented, knowing that he had no other choice but to bend to Adure's will. But he told Adure that he can't grant her exact wish because it's not possible, that he can only make, make her mad and run away from Umoye village. He warned Adure of the grave consequences of her actions, but she paid no heed, her mind consumed by thoughts of vengeance. With a sinister smile, she commanded the witch doctor to carry out her bidding, eager to see her plan set into motion. Hours passed as the witch doctor performed his dark rituals, calling upon ancient powers to bring about Ufoma's downfall. Adure watched with glee as the witch doctor worked his magic, her heart filled with anticipation for the destruction that awaited her former friend. Finally, the ritual was complete and the witch doctor informed Adure that her wishes had been granted. With a sense of satisfaction, Adure left the witch doctor's hut, eager to await the news of Ufoma's fate. The sun rose over the kingdom of Umoe, casting its golden rays upon the land. But for Prince Tobena and the people of the kingdom, the day brought only darkness and despair. As Ufoma opened her eyes that morning, a strange sensation washed over her. Something unseen brushed against her head, sending shivers down her spine. Suddenly, without warning, she was consumed by madness. My love, my love, my love, she screamed, her voice echoing through the palace halls as she bolted from her chambers. Prince Tobina, startled by his wife's frantic cries, rushed after her, his heart pounding with fear. Ufoma, come back! He called desperately, but she paid no heed. Her mind lost to madness. The palace guard sprang into action, attempting to restrain Ufoma, but she was like a wild animal, fueled by fear and confusion. She ran with lightning speed, leaving everyone in her wake as she disappeared into the depths of the kingdom. Shock and confusion gripped the kingdom of Umowe as news of Ufoma's disappearance spread like wildfire. The king ordered his guards to search every corner of the kingdom, but despite their efforts, Ufoma remained elusive. Weeks turned into months, yet there was still no sign of Ufoma. Prince Tobena's heart shattered into a million pieces as he grappled with the agony of losing his beloved wife. He wept bitter tears and refused to eat, his soul consumed by grief. His parents, the king and queen, tried their best to comfort him, but their words fell on deaf ears. Prince Tobena could not bear the thought of life without Ufoma by his side. Then one day, Adure appeared at the palace uninvited, her presence sending a chill down Prince Tobena's spine. 
demanded answers from her, desperate to know the truth about Ofoma's disappearance. Adure, with a calm demeanor, spun a web of lies. Within a tale of Ofoma's family cause, she claimed that Ofoma's mother had also gone mad during her pregnancy, and now the same fate had befallen Ofoma. But Prince Tobena, enraged by Adure's accusations against his beloved wife, lashed out at her. How dare you speak such evil of Ofoma? He thundered, his eye blazing with fury. Adure, undeterred by the prince's anger, confessed her feelings for him, declaring that she was willing to fill the void left by Ofoma's absence. But her words only fueled the prince's rage and he ordered the guards to remove her from the palace at once. As Adure was escorted away, her heart burned with hatred and resentment. She swore to make Prince Tobena hers, no matter the cost, and she vowed to stop at nothing to achieve her wicked desires. And so, as darkness descended upon the kingdom of Umoe, the stage was set for a battle of wheels between love and vengeance, with the fate of the kingdom hanging in the balance. Adure stormed back to the witch doctor's hut, her mind consumed by rage and desperation. She demanded that he use his dark powers to make Prince Tobina formally in love with her, to the point where he would do anything she commanded. But the witch doctor shook his head solemnly, warning Adure of the grave consequences of tampering with destiny. Prince Tobena's heart belongs to Ofoma. He insisted, I cannot change fate, but Adure would not be dissuaded. She pleaded with the witch doctor, threatening him with their consequences if he did not comply with her wishes. Reluctantly, the witch doctor agreed, knowing that Adure's determination would not be swayed. With a heavy heart, the witch doctor performed the dark ritual, calling upon ancient powers to bend Prince Tobena's will to Adure's desires. As the ritual reached its climax, the witch doctor warned Adure of the dangers that lay ahead, but she paid no heed, her mind consumed by thoughts of power and control. Finally, the ritual was complete and Adure left the witch doctor's heart with a sense of triumph. She returned home, her heart filled with anticipation, as she awaited Prince Tobena's arrival. True to the witch doctor's words, Prince Tobena soon appeared at Adure's doorstep, his eyes filled with adoration. My love, he whispered, reaching out to embrace her. Adure's heart swelled with satisfaction. As she realized that her plan had worked, she smiled, reveling in the knowledge that she finally had the prince all to herself. But as they journeyed to the palace together, Adure couldn't help but notice that Prince Domena kept calling her Ofoma, my love. She corrected him, insisting that her name was Adure, but the prince seemed oblivious to her words. Nevertheless, Adure brushed aside her concerns, knowing that she had achieved her ultimate goal. She would become the princess of Omoye, and nothing else mattered. The wedding was a grand affair, with the kingdom rejoicing at the union of Prince Tobena and Adure. But behind the scenes, dark clouds loomed, as Adure began to exert her control over the prince, manipulating him to do her bidding. The king and queen watched with growing concern as Adure's influence over their son grew stronger by the day. They confronted her, pleading with her to release Prince Tobena from her spell. But Adure's response was swift and vicious. She lashed out at the queen and king, hurling insults and threats at them, her eyes blazing with hatred. You are nothing but obstacles in my path to power, she spat. Her voice dripping with venom, leave us alone or suffer the consequences. The king and queen were shattered by Adure's cruel words, her heart heavy with despair. They summoned their son, 
hoping to break the spell that had ensnared him. But Prince Tobena remained defiant, declaring his undying love for Aduri. His parents, desperate to save their son from the clutches of darkness, searched for evidence of foul play, but they found none. Aduri's hold over Prince Tobena seemed unbreakable, leaving the kingdom titling on the brink of chaos. And so, as the battle for control raged within the palace walls, the fate of the kingdom hung in the balance, with darkness threatening to consume them all. Three long years had passed since Adure had become the princess of Omoye, but her heart still yearned for the one thing she desired most, a child of her own. But despite her prayers and pleas, her womb remained empty and the palace halls echoed with silence. Prince Tobena, his brow furrowed with worry, approached Adure one evening, concern edged upon his face. My love, what troubles you? He asked gently, his eyes searching hearts for answers. Adure's heart ached as she looked into her husband's eyes, knowing that she could not bear to disappoint him. With a heavy heart, she confessed her secret sorrow, telling him of her inability to conceive. Determined to find a solution, Aduri rushed to the witch doctor's hut, hoping to find answers to her prayers. But when she confronted the witch doctor, his words struck her like a dagger from the heart. You will never bear a child. He told her bloodly, his voice cold and devoid of sympathy. Your womb was used in the rituals and it can never bear fruit. Adore's word shattered around her as she realized the magnitude of her mistake. She demanded to know why the witch doctor had not warned her of the consequences, but his answers offered her little solace. I warned you, but you choose not to listen. He replied, his tone indifferent. Now go home and live with the consequences of your actions. Confused and heartbroken, Adore left the witch doctor's heart, her mind swelling with the thought of despair and regret. She returned to the palace, retreating to her chambers to ponder her fate. As she sat alone in the dimly lit room, a thought suddenly occurred to her, a way to fulfill her husband's desire for a child, even if it meant deceiving him. With a steely determination, Adore began to craft her plan. She fashioned a false pregnancy bump out of fabric, carefully concealing it beneath her garment to give the appearance of a swollen belly. She refused to let Prince Tobena come near her, claiming that she needed time and space to prepare for the birth of their child. And as the months passed, Adore's deception grew more elaborate. Her first pregnancy bump growing larger with each passing day. Finally, after nine long months of waiting, Adore went into labor, her cries echoing through the palace halls. The midwife, in on Adore's scheme, emerged from the chambers with a baby in her arms, a baby boy, rosy-cheeked and crying softly. Prince Tobena's eyes shone with joy as he beheld his son for the first time his heart overflowing with love and pride. Obidike, he whispered, bestowing the name upon his newborn son, a symbol of strength and resilience. The palace erupted into celebration as the news of the prince's head spread throughout the kingdom. The king and queen, though harboring doubts and suspicions, joined in the festivities, putting on a facade of happiness for their son's sake. But amidst the joyous chaos, Adore's heart weighed heavy with guilt and shame, knowing that her happiness was built upon a foundation of lies and deceit. As she looked upon her newborn, she couldn't help but wonder what kind of future awaited him in a kingdom built on deception and betrayal. Ten years had passed since the birth of Prince Obidiki, and he had grown into a fine young man wise beyond his years. But despite his gentle nature, he couldn't help 
but notice the turmoil that pledged the kingdom of Umoe. The king and queen, once beloved by their people, had died under mysterious circumstances, leaving their son Tobena to ascend the throne. But instead of leading with wisdom and compassion, Tobena had become a puppet in the hands of his queen, Adure. Adure ruled the kingdom with an iron fist. Her every word law and her every whim obeyed without question. She stripped Tobena of his power, reducing him to nothing more than a figurehead, while she wielded control over the kingdom with impunity. The villagers watched from the shadows, their hearts heavy with fear and uncertainty. They whispered among themselves, wondering when someone would rise up and challenge Adure's tyrannical rule. One fateful night, King Tobina awoke from a troubled sleep, his mind clouded with confusion. He looked upon Adure, lying beside him, and recoiled in horror, his voice trembling with fear. Who are you? He cried, his eyes wide with disbelief. You are not my Ufoma. Adure's heart raised with panic as she realized that Tobina had regained his senses. If only for a fleeting moment. Desperate for a solution, she fled to the witch doctor's hut, hoping to find a remedy for her husband's sudden awakening. The witch doctor listened to Adiris tale of war, his expression unbearable, handed a ring, imbued with ancient magic, and instructed her to place it upon Tobina's face to bring him back under her control. Yeah. Returning to the palace, Adure approached Tobina with trepidation, her heart pounding in her chest. With a trembling hand, she placed the ring upon his face, willing the magic to take effect. Instantly, Tobina's demeanor changed, his eyes glazing over as he once again succumbed to Adure's influence. He embraced her lovingly, calling her his queen, his voice filled with adoration. From that day forth, Adure used the ring to maintain her hold over Tobina, ensuring that he remained under her control at all times. And as the chaos within the kingdom continued to escalate, the villagers watched in silence, their hopes of liberation dwindling with each passing day. But amidst the turmoil, Prince Obidike could not remain silent. He had witnessed firsthand the suffering of his people, and he knew that something had to be done to end Adure's tyranny. One day, he summoned the courage to comfort his mother. His voice steady with determination. Why do you control father? He demanded, his eyes burning with defiance. Adure's gaze hardened, and she silenced her son with a sharp reprimand. You are too young to understand the affairs of the palace, she snapped. Her tone, laced with venom, do not interfere in matters that do not consign you. But Prince Obidike refused to be cowed. Deep down, he knew that something was terribly wrong in the kingdom, and he vowed to uncover the truth, no matter the cost. As the days turned into weeks, Prince Obidike continued to observe the palace with a keen eye, searching for any signs of weakness in Adure's hold over his father. And as he delved deeper into the mysteries of the kingdom, he knew that the time would soon come for him to take a stand and fight for the freedom of his people. As days turned into weeks, Prince Obidike's determination to uncover the truth about his mother's dark deeds grew stronger. He spent his days following Adure's every move, hiding in the shadows as he watched her manipulate his father with her sinister magic. One fateful day, as Adure and Tobena sat in their chamber, unaware of the praying eyes upon them, Tobena suddenly regained his senses. He looked upon Adure with confusion. His mind clouded with memories of his lost love, Ofoma. Obidike, hidden in the shadows, watched in horror as Adure swiftly reached for the ring and placed it upon Tobena's face. Her action, confirming his worst fears, she was indeed using dark magic to control his father's mind. With a heavy heart, Obidike knew that he had to seek out the truth no matter the cost. 
She sought the counsel of a wise elder in the village, hoping to unravel the mystery of Ofoma's disappearance. The elder, with a heavy heart, recounted the tragic tale of Ofoma, how she had been driven mad and disappeared without a trace. His words struck a chord within Obidiki, confirming his suspicions about his mother's involvement in Ofoma's fate. Filled with righteous anger, Obidike returned home and confronted his mother, his voice trembling with emotion. Mother, did you drive Ofoma mad just to take my father from her? He demanded, his eyes blazing with fury. Adore's heart skipped a bit as she realized that her son had uncovered her dark secret. She denied the accusations, insisting that the villagers were merely spreading lies out of jealousy and spite. But Obidike refused to be swayed by his mother's words. He had seen the truth with his own eyes, and he was determined to set his father free from her wicked grasp. With a heavy heart, Obidike vowed to uncover the truth, no matter the cost. He knew that his journey would not be easy, but he was prepared to face whatever challenges lay ahead in order to bring justice to his family and his kingdom. And so, as the sun set over the kingdom of Umowe, Prince Obidike set forth on his quest for truth and justice, his heart filled with determination and courage. Little did he know that his journey would lead him down a path fraught with danger and betrayal, testing his resolve at every turn. But he was determined to see it through to the end, no matter what obstacles lay in his path. As the days passed, Prince Obidike remained vigilant, keeping a watchful eye on his mother's every move. One fateful night, as Queen Adure retired to her chambers to bat, she removed the ring that had granted her control over King Rubena. But when she returned, the ring was nowhere to be found. Panic seized Adure's heart as she searched frantically for the missing ring, her mind racing with fear and desperation. She tore through the palace, turning every stone in search of the precious artifact, but it was nowhere to be found. In a fit of desperation, Adira hurried to the witch doctor's hut, hoping to find answers to her predicament. But to her horror, she discovered the witch doctor lying lifeless on the ground, his eyes closed in eternal slumber. Adira's world crumbled around her, and she realized that her only hope of regaining control over King Tobena had been extinguished. With a heavy heart, she returned to the palace, her mind consumed by fear and uncertainty. But even as Adure struggled to come to terms with her loss, Prince Obdike approached her, his eyes filled with concern. Is everything all right, mother? He asked, his voice tinged with worry. Adure forced a smile. Masking her inner turmoil, everything is fine, my dear, she replied, her voice trembling slightly. You should return to your chambers and rest. But sleep eluded Adure that night as she paced the corridors of the palace, her mind consumed by thoughts of the ring and its mysterious disappearance. She dared not to reveal her fears to anyone for she knew that the consequences of her actions would be there. As the days passed, King Tobena showed no sign of regaining his senses, giving Adure precious time to search for the missing ring. But despite her best efforts, the artifact remained elusive, leaving her feeling more desperate than ever. Then one fateful day, King Tobena suddenly awoke from his slumber. His mind clear and his memories intact. Adure's heart sank as she, as she realized that her time was running out and she could no longer maintain her charade. With a heavy heart, Kiktobena confronted Adure, his voice filled with confusion and disbelief. Who are you and where is my wife, Ufoma? He demanded, his eyes searching her for answers. Adure's facade crumbled as she struggled to find the words to explain her deception. She tried to convince Tobena that they were married and had a son together, but he refused to believe her words. As Tobena's voice echoed through the palace walls, 
Prince Obidike rushed to his father's side, his heart heavy with sorrow. He knew that his mother had been using dark magic to control his father, and he could no longer stand idly by and watch her deception unfold. Tobena dragged Adure outside the chambers. Soon the villagers gathered, and Obidike confessed what he saw. He told them that his mother made Ufoma mad and controlled his father with a spell all these years, and that he had destroyed the charm. The villagers, shocked by the revelation, gathered around, their faces twisted with disbelief and anger. Obidike's accusation sent shockwaves through the kingdom, shattering the illusion of peace and prosperity that Adure had carefully crafted. But Adure, far from repentance, laughed in the face of her accusers, her voice filled with venom and malice. She confessed to her crimes without remorse, admitting to driving Ufoma mad, using dark charm to control Tobena, and orchestrating the death of the former king and queen. She even went ahead to confess that Obidike was not of a royal blood, that she used her womb as a sacrifice to get hold of Tobena. She confessed that Obidike was a stolen child. The villagers recoiled in horror at her words. Their trust in their queen shattered beyond repair. And as Adure's laughter echoed through the palace walls, she succumbed to madness, fleeing into the night with wild eyes and a heart consumed by darkness. Left behind in the wake of her madness, Tobena stood frozen, his heart heavy with sorrow and regret. But Obidike, ever the beacon of hope, approached his father with open arms, offering comfort and solace in the midst of the chaos. As the door settled and the truth emerged, King Tobena embraced his son, tears of gratitude streaming down his face. You are the true crown prince of Umoe, he declared, his voice filled with pride, and together we will restore honor and justice to our kingdom. We renewed determination. Tobena and Obidike set forth on a quest to find Ofoma, knowing that their journey would be fraught with danger and uncertainty. But with the strength of their bond and the support of their people, they faced the challenges ahead with courage and resolve, determined to bring peace and prosperity back to the kingdom of Umoye. Two days later, in the peaceful village of Ndio, where the gentle breeze whispered through the trees and the sun cast its warm rays upon the earth, something miraculous happened. Ufoma, who had wandered the streets in madness for years, regained her senses. She blinked in the sunlight, her eyes clear and bright. She looked around, taking in her surroundings with a newfound clarity. The villagers gathered around her, their faces filled with hope and wonder, eager to hear her tell. Do you remember anything? They asked, their voices filled with anticipation. Ufoma nodded, her heart swelling with emotion. Yes, she replied softly, I remembered everything. With tears in her eyes, the villagers listened as Ufoma recounted her journey from her days as the beloved wife of King Tobena to the darkness that had consumed her mind. And as she spoke, a sense of peace washed over her, knowing that she had finally found her way back home. The villagers helped Ufoma freshen up, providing her with food and clothing. And soon, she felt like herself again, ready to face whatever lay ahead. But there was one question that weighed heavily on her heart. Where is my child? She asked, her voice trembling with emotion. The villagers exchanged a knowing glance before gently leading Ufoma to a humble cottage on the outskirts of the village. Inside, an elderly woman waited, her face lined with age but her eyes filled with kindness. And there sat a beautiful 14-year-old young girl, her eyes wide with wonder as she gazed up at her mother. Ufoma's heart swelled with love as she embraced her daughter tightly. Tears of joy streaming down her cheeks. Adeze, she whispered, her voice filled with love. My sweet Adeze. The villagers smiled through their tears, knowing that Ufoma had finally found her way back to her family. Together, they returned to the kingdom of Umore, where the streets were lined with cheering villagers and the air rang with laughter and song. King Tobena could hardly contain his joy as he embraced his wife and daughter, tears of happiness streaming down his face. He recounted the tale of their separation and reunion, 
his heart overflowing with gratitude for the miracle that had brought them back together. And here, he said, turning to his son, Prince Obidike, is the brave young man who helped us uncover the truth and bring you and your mother back to us. Ufama hugged Obidike tightly, her heart filled with gratitude for the young prince who had played such a pivotal role in their reunion. Together, they joined hands with the villagers, their voices raised in celebration as they danced and sang late into the night. And so, in the kingdom of Umore, peace and happiness reigned once more. King Tobena, Queen Ufoma, Princess Adeze, and Prince Obidiki lived happily ever after. Their bond stronger than ever before. And though their journey had been filled with trials and tribulations, they knew that as long as they had each other, they could overcome any obstacle that stood in their way. This story of Ufoma, Tobina, and Adure teaches us an important lesson about envy, jealousy, and greed. Adure's envy and jealousy led her to take drastic measures to gain what she desired, even resorting to dark magic and deceit. However, her actions only brought destruction and misery upon herself and those around her. We learned that it's important to be content with what we have and not to convert what belongs to others. Envy and greed can lead us down a path of darkness and sorrow. Ultimately, causing harm to ourselves and those we care about. Instead, we should appreciate and cherish what we have and work hard to achieve our goals through honest and fair means. In the end, evil deeds never bring true happiness or fulfillment. It's always better to be kind honest and content for these virtues lead to a life filled with peace love and joy thanks for watching this amazing story about ufoma tobina and aduri on african stories if you liked it and felt inspired with your journey please show your support by clicking the like button sharing with your friends and leaving a comment below to see more interesting stories and learn about different cultures, subscribe to African Stories. And don't forget to ring the notification bell so you never miss a new story. Your support means a lot and helps us bring more stories to you. Until we meet again, stay connected, stay inspired, and keep smiling.